Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Well, I'm so glad to be before you this morning. It's been a minute since I've been up. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you got your Bibles, let's go jump right into Zechariah, the fourth chapter, because I got a little something that I want to just dish out to you this morning. Amen. You know, I, I, this is the year, uh, this is our 25th church anniversary yeah. celebration. We are excited about what God is doing, what God is going to do. Can y'all see in the dark? I, I want to make sure y'all can see. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all can see. Y'all all right? Amen. Y'all need light? Yeah, bring a little light up there for them. Amen. Glory to God. It feels like it's a little clubbish, but it's all right. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> they need to be able to see and read the word. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, listen, how many of you are excited about what God is getting ready to do? Yeah. How many are you excited about being a part of this church for the last 25 years? Yeah. How about we can say we come this far by faith, yeah. trusting in his holy word. Yeah. He never failed me yet. Yeah. So praise the Lord, since he never failed you yet, he won't fail you. Yeah. I said, if he never failed you, he won't fail you. So let's jump right into the word of God in Zechariah, the fourth chapter, the sixth to the eighth verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the word of the Lord reads, he says, then he answered and spake unto me, uh, unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse number nine, the hand of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands also shall finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me, sent me unto you, for who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plumbing in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole world. So this morning, as I began to introduce this message, it's a pre-anniversary message to the body of Christ. Amen. We'll have a guest speaker on that Sunday, but I'm going to uh, minister this morning to you this morning. Uh, the title is The Year of the Double Grace of God. The Year of the Double Grace of God. I say the Year of the Double Grace of God. It's one thing when you get one shot of it, but now he's saying there's a double grace of God. And if you notice in the scripture, he's telling Zerubbabel, he's giving instructions, God's giving him to shout, grace, grace to the mountain. And this morning, I truly believe that you got to get something on your tongue, lip, and vocal cord that you got to give sound to what you believe. Somebody shout, grace, grace this morning. Grace. Oh, yeah, that's good. But, you know, you got to be able to really believe in the grace of God. We're going to define it for you so that you can grab a hold of it because I believe that this grace, grace of God is still available to every one of you as a believer. Amen. So we're excited to announce that the celebration of the 25th church anniversary, pastor's anniversary here. But 25 years ago, God moved upon our hearts to pioneer a, a, a church that would impact the community and would and reach the world by reaching the lost and maturing the body and spreading the love of Jesus Christ. Since its inception, God has favored us. God has sustained us. God has empowered us. And God has graced us. He graced us to overcome every obstacle and everything that began to move against what he has already ordained. How many know that when God ordains something, you cannot stop it? I say only way that it stops if you stop. Because God is forever behind the force of what he has already spoken to you. Now, let me define grace for you so you can go ahead and get that out of your way. So grace is defined as the unmerited favor of God. Unmerited favor of God. It is God's free and spontaneous action taken to meet the human need, especially in providing salvation 
and enabling the believer, enabling the believer. We access this grace by faith. We access this grace by faith. Amen. So the grace of God is available for, for us in every area of our lives, including our finances, including our relationships, including our employment, including everything that we do. So there should be no lack among the people of God when you understand the grace of God. Ah, y'all being quiet now. I said there should be no lack among the people of God when you understand the grace of God. So that means that if grace is upon you, that means that his grace, his unmerited favor is, is toward you. Are you with me? Not only that, but his supernatural is on your natural to get the desired results that you need. There is an enabling grace that will grant, guarantee you to move any mountain that is in your way. There is an enabling grace that will help you to move any mountain that is in your way. If sickness is in your way right now, you got the enabling grace of God to shout grace, grace to it. Yeah. I want you to get it on your tips, your long tip, your, your tongue, grip, lips, and vocal cord. Shout grace, grace to it. Grace, grace to if there's a scenario in your finances right now where you feel like your finances is not where it should be and you need a breakthrough right now, you begin to shout grace, grace to it. Grace, grace to it. If there are situations in your life right now from a relationship perspective where you see where things are not working the way that it should be working. Your marriage might not be working the way that it should be working. Your children may not be working the way that it should be working. Your uncles, your aunties, your cousins, all of them may not be working the way they should. But you can shout grace, grace, grace to it. No, you got to have faith while you shout grace, grace to it. Because if you don't have faith in shouting grace, grace to it, you might as well keep your mouth closed. Are y'all with me? Because it's only when God gives you a directive that you're supposed to be able to write, wow, that's the word of the Lord. I received that word today because I am in need of a word from God. Is there anybody this morning that is in need of a word from God? Don't let your circumstance beat you down to the point where you don't have no energy to open up your mouth. Because if you don't learn how to do it here, it's going to be very difficult for you when you get at home by yourself. See, when you're all alone, the enemy know how to put the pressure on you. He know how to put the pressure and the squeeze on you to the point that all you do is think about your situation. Get that off of your mind and begin to think of your victory right now. Get the victory on your mind right now. Get the victory on your mind right now that you're coming out of that situation that you're in. Get the victory on your mind right now that your body is being healed right now. Get the victory on your mind right now that relationships are now being restored right now. Get victory on your mind that no matter where you go, you got the favor of God. It goes before you. Come on. It goes behind you. It's on the side of you. It's everywhere you go. Somebody shout, I've got the favor of God. Shout with me. This is the year. That I, will celebrate that I will celebrate the manifestation, the manifestation of, the of the double grace of God upon the house of agape, house of agape and upon my house just as well. Upon my house just as well. My house just as well. Glory to God. So the number 25 symbolizes grace upon grace, thus giving us this year's steam, the double grace of God. And you know, anytime when the house of God get the message, it rolls down to your house. You are covered. Are y'all with me? You are covered. So let's go back and, and look at this again. It says, uh, who art thou, O great mountain? I love this because Zerubbabel was beginning to say, I've, I've, I've been on assignment to do something, and as I begin to do something, this big mountain shows up. Have you ever been in your life where you begin to obey God and all of a sudden things just appear out of nowhere? I mean, really appear out of nowhere. But here he says, he says, but before, he says, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, that thou shall become a plain? In other words, he starts speaking to the mountain. Are y'all with me? He starts speaking to the mountain. And when he starts speaking to the mountain, he says, you know, he says, he says, uh, he says, now that you know a plain, and you shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings of grace 
grace unto it. He says, you're going to bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings of grace, grace, grace to it. He didn't say one time. He said, you're going to say it two times. And he said, the power of God is going to be on you so strong that the very thing that you're believing for to be flattened is going to be smoothed out. It's going to be smoothed out. So I'm telling you right now, there might be some roughage going on in your life right now, but when you get a hold of this concept, it shall be smoothed out. I say it shall. Yeah, glory to God. It shall be smoothed out. Tell your neighbor it's going to be smoothed out. Tell him again, it's going to be smoothed out. Glory to God. I love this verse here in verse 7 because the latter part of it, it says that the cornerstone and lay it with shoutings of grace, grace. And I want to just take a few minutes to talk about grace because this is the thing that I want you to get that most times when you're building a building, what happened? The cornerstone is the last thing that goes on the building. But in this particular case, he tells, the prophet tells the man of God, look, you go and you, you, you get the stone now and you begin to open up your mouth and begin to shout grace, grace to it. And as you shout grace, grace to it, the grace is going to get on you that is going to enable you to do what you need to do. It's going to get on you. Ah, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, some of you need to get your checkbooks out right about now and shout grace, grace, grace to it. And stop looking about what you don't have and what you're looking for, but look, shout grace, grace, grace to it. Some of you need to really put your hands on your bodies and say, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I speak to the mountain of sickness and disease right now. It's got to go in the name of Jesus. Grace, grace to it right now. The supernatural power of God is on my life right now to get the healing that I need right now. I'm just like Zerubbabel. I'm going to receive the word of the Lord. Y'all don't hear me. I'm going to receive the word of the Lord and it's going to change things in my life. If you're dealing with depression this morning, shout grace, grace to it. Uh, Y'all some really interesting shouting grace, grace to it. Amen. Can I get a little bit more volume up here? Amen. Can I get a little bit more volume up here? Glory to God. Amen. Can I get a little bit more volume up here? Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I need to shout a little bit so they can really hear me. Can y'all hear me now? Because I don't really hear y'all. Glory to God. I know you're saying something, but I want you to get out of where you are because you got to shake this thing off of you so that you can really get to the place that you can build your faith to receive the word of the Lord. So I'm going to say it again. Somebody shout grace, grace to it right now. Shout grace, grace to my finance right now. I believe right now. Every time I open up my mouth. To shout grace, grace to it. Shout grace, grace to it. Your enabling grace Your comes upon me. And right now, I am re energized. I'm rebooting right now. I am renewed right now. I shout grace to it. Better yet, I shout grace, grace to it. Go to Isaiah, the 60, 61st chapter, starting with verse number one. Hallelujah. It says that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He's, he had sent me to build, to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to those that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all them that mourn. This is Isaiah, the 61st chapter, starting with the first verse. Glory to God. I'm now on uh, the third verse. It says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. So that's no reason. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Anybody heavy this morning? You got the spirit of praise that can get that heaviness off of you. I said, if you are heavy this morning, the spirit of praise is there to get the heaviness off of you. Glory to God. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the oasis. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And it goes on and says, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the aliens shall 
shall be your plowmen and their vine and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Number seven says, For your shame, ye shall have devil. <laughs> I'll say it one more time. For your shame, you're going to have dealt double, said the Lord. And he says, and for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. For confusion, they shall rejoice where? In their portions. Glory to God. Therefore, in the land, they shall possess the double. In the land, they shall possess what? No. So in the land, I will possess what? No. I'm going to possess what? The double grace of God. I will possess the double grace of God. I'm going to possess what now? The double grace of God. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. So that means that even while I am in my stead or wherever I am, the enabling grace of God will be upon me. The favor of God will be upon me. And because of it, I am going to have double. For my shame, I shall receive double. For the lack, I'm going to receive double. For the sickness, I'm going to receive double. My portion is healing. Glory to God. Ah, glory to God. So my portion is soundness. Glory to God. My, my, my portion, glory to God. It's joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. My portion. Everybody say, my portion. Is I'm coming out of this situation. Now, let me just say to you, for 25 years, we've gone through ups and downs throughout this house of agape. But at the end of the day, God has continued to sustain us. He's continued to us to sustain us. He's continued to pour in, bless us, even when, glory to God, we didn't know how we are going to make it. But he was with us all the time. All the good, glory to God, he was there. All the bad, he was there. And we're still standing. I said, we're still standing. So now, the Bible says a lot about grace 125 times. The word grace is Found. 16 out of 21 is in the epistles in the New Testament begins with the word grace be unto you. And Paul says it so well, grace be unto you. Now, now the epistle of, of Ephesians talks about the riches of his grace, the glory of his grace. And the Bible teaches us that there are four kinds of grace. And I just want to run them through you tonight because today because I feel like, you know, Sunday I won't preach, glory to God. But today I decide I will introduce this message to you because I want you to come back with excitement. You are coming back Sunday, amen, glory to God. I want you to come back with excitement, but I want you to come back knowing that the word of God is at work in you. I want you to be able to hear the word today and experience the miracle today. I didn't say experience the miracle tomorrow. I said, I want you to experience it today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So that whatever it is that you are going through, you got to know that the double grace of God is there to carry you. Yeah. You got to know that you can't speak to the mountain and tell that mountain to be what? To be moved. How many, how many know that the word of the Lord teaches us that this is exactly what we're supposed to do over in Mark 11 chapter? I'm just going to read it right quickly for those because we teach this principle all the time and it's something that we need to be able to always uh, be uh, uh, reminded of. In this 22nd verse, it says, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. How many got faith in God this morning? He goes on and says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those, but shall believe, but shall believe that those things, come on now, that he, that, that he, but, but those things that, no, go back and say, but thou shall, but thou shall be moved, but thou, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He he shall have what so whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. But it's going back to saying that it was not only just Zerubbabel that had to speak to the mountain, but now in the New Testament it's saying that we must speak to the mountain. When was the last time you opened your mouth and spoke to your mountain? 
When was the last time you began to open up your mouth and decree and declare the word of faith concerning the very thing that you were believing God to do in your life? God is in the miracle working business. God is still healing the sick. God is still raising the dead. Come on, God is still bringing miracles after miracles after miracles. But it's your responsibility to what? To activate your faith in God. Your responsibility is to what now? So if you don't say nothing, what happens? But when you open your mouth, you begin to decree a thing. And what the Bible says, that when we decree a thing, what? It shall be established. So that means that we must open up our mouth. That's if you believe. I said, that's if you believe. That's if you believe all things are possible. What's left after all? Nothing. So that means that there is nothing too hard for God. I said again, there's nothing too hard for God. Let's look at the first grace. It's the first is the saving grace. Over in Ephesians, the second chapter. Hallelujah. I want you to know that this is very important because a lot of times we feel like some of the things that we do is all because of what we do. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse number eight and nine, it says, for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, you don't get good to get God. Amen. You get God to get good. <laughs> huh? And his grace is what saves you, not your earnings or your deservings. We are all saved by grace. Our faith is not one of us working and deserving and earning our salvation, but by grace are we saved and not of works. Salvation is not do, do, do. It's done, done, done. Based on what Jesus has already done as far as his finished work on the cross. So there's saving grace. Thank God for it today because I'm not saved by my performance, but by what Jesus did on the cross. I have saving grace. You have saving grace. And the Bible continues to teach us that you know that it's, it's not a works, but, but it, uh, it is what Jesus has already done unto us. So, what do we all have? First of all, what is? Somebody tell I have saving grace. I have saving grace. Not by works. Not by works. That any man can boast. Any man can boast. But, it's but it's by the blood of Jesus. Secondly, there's another kind of grace that we call justifying grace. Glory to God. Romans the fifth chapter. I like this. Because it gets really exciting because many times if you don't understand the grace, it's going to be difficult for you to access the double grace. If you don't understand the single grace, <laughs> you'll be trying to figure out how do I access the double. Amen. So Romans, the fifth chapter, starting with verse number one, it says, therefore being justified by faith. Are y'all there? It says we have what? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the word justified takes on the meaning of just as if I never sinned. I thought somebody would have shouted hallelujah on that one because the scripture says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Huh? It's just as if I never sinned. We really don't understand how great God's grace is, how wonderful it is. Not only does it save us, but it justifies us before him. This grace comes over you and th that when you sin and you confess your sin and walk away from that sin and change your actions toward God, you are completely covered. Amen. I'm not telling you that you can say, you can say, uh, I, God, you know, I know that I, 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 it's just as if I didn't sin and you go right back and do it again. That's not what I'm saying. Do you get what I'm saying? Because many believers think that, you know, you can keep doing what you want to do, how you want to do it, and you can use grace as the justification. Wrong. It does not work that way. Are y'all with me? 
See, Satan is the accuser, and when the accuser attacks us, it's God's grace that covers us and says, it's just as if you never, ever sinned because the grace and the righteousness of Jesus has been put on you. Glory to God. So when I'm preparing you and setting you up for it, I promise it's relevant to the crisis that we are in today. And, and, and where we are right now as a nation, and e even as individual, and even as, you know, owners of businesses, this is one of the most important things that we need to understand is that, you know, there is a saving grace, and there is a justifying grace. And it means just as if I what? Never sinned. Never sin, but just because there is a justification of grace, it does not give you the green light to sneak and go and do things that you ain't got no business doing. Amen. It means that you got to live holy just as the scripture tells you to live holy. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Thirdly, there is a teaching grace. Go to Titus, the second chapter, because I want you to get this. Titus, the second chapter. Are y'all getting anything this morning? Yeah. Verse number 11, it says, for the, y'all read this with me because I want to make sure everybody get this because some people just feel like, you know, as for grace, I can do what I want to do and, and hang out and do, and, you know, I can drink, I can smoke weed. I can cuss. I can do all of that. I can, you know, I can, <laughs> y'all know, come on, you know, glory to God. The believers can do some stuff, you know, and then when they can get back to, oh, but I'm covered by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Uh-uh, come on, that's religious. If you, I'm serving notice on you right now. If you are a weed smoker, I have to say this, you need to shut it down. There is saving grace. There is justifying grace. But there's a teaching grace that says that, you know, if you really, really want to be free of that thing, you'll get rid of it. If you are a drinker today and social, I don't care if you are social to the 10th level of alcoholic. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Yes. The reality is you can't live that way. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes, if you are a fornicator, ooh, glory to God. We don't talk about these things too much in church today. That means if you're having sex without a married person in your life that is legally married to you. Oh, hold your head up and roll your shoulders back. Amen. If you're an adulterer this morning and you're touching somebody else's wife and come on, y'all, and not touching your own wife, come on, something is wrong. Now, let me flip it. If you are the same way as a woman that you're touching somebody else's husband, and you're not touching your own husband. There is no justification to that. Are y'all with me? So the bottom line is, you know, as we come into this teaching grace, the teaching grace is not that I can do this and just say, oh, 1 John 1, 9 says that if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me of all unright. We know that scripture. But tell your neighbor that's so religious. Tell him again, that's so religious. Repentance is a 180 degree turn. Turn it away from your sin. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I say repentance is 180 degree turn. Turn it away from your sin. And there is no justification that you can say, oh, grace covers me. That's what the Bible says. But you got a different agenda. Let's see what the scripture says. Titus, the second chapter, the 11th verse, it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to what? I hear some of y'all, y'all got it? Let's get down, this, get the scriptures. I want you to see this. It says again, For the grace of God that, are, that bringeth salvation hath what now? Look at verse number 12. Teaching us that denying on all oh, shucking now. Deny what now? Ungodliness. Ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, I don't want to pass soberly because soberly indicates that if you are drunk with the world stuff, you are not paying attention to God's stuff. Huh? And God is requiring you to live sober. God's requiring for you to live, uh, you know, with a sound mind. God is requiring for you to live with his mind. God wants you to know that you let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He says, you know, he, he says soberly, and then he goes on and says righteously. And 
and godly. Where are we going to do that? In this present world. In this present world. Are y'all with me? Yes. Come on now. I'm, I'm just, this is just introduction. I promise you. I know the man of God is going to come in and he's going to throw down with a wonderful, wonderful message. But the Lord told me this is a wonderful time. I want y'all to get this whole principle because you need to understand that we have these graces. But there is an enabling grace that's upon you that it needs to work. But you got to make sure that the other ones that you do understand that how they're supposed to be working. Now, let me ask you a question. Are we working together this, this morning? Yeah. Are, are you are you working? Are you working with me this morning? Yeah. Do, do you understand for the first one? What's the first one is saving grace. Amen. How many born again and saved this morning? On him. Amen. Glory to God. How about the second one? The second one is what? Justifying. Justifying grace. We understand that, you know, even though we might sin because the scripture says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, you know, that we when we repent and turn to God and turn right to God and turn away from that sin, then that, guess what? We are covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's just as if we didn't never do it. Oh, y'all ought to be shouting glory to God. I said, some of you, you come on now. You know you parted so hard that you know you left one party and went to another party. Some of you drunk so much liquor you didn't even know where you were when you woke up the next day. But somebody said, but God covered my sins just as if I didn't do it. Thank you for the blood. Some of y'all were going to church and still going and doing some other stuff. You know, you were pretending. Yeah. Somebody shout, but God. But God. Am I preaching this morning? Because yeah. I'm telling you, religious people are some of the dangerous folk that you can deal with. Yeah. You got a hallelujah, but you got another beat too. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you got to get to this place where you repent of your sin yeah. and turn from all your wicked ways. Wow, I love the scripture because it says, it says we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Woo. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When people say that I'm under grace and I can live any way that I want to, I'm under grace and I can, uh, I can, I can sleep, I can sleep with my, my girlfriend or my boyfriend. I'm under grace and I can commit adultery. I'm under grace and I can take a little drink. Ain't that wrong with taking a little look every now and then? I, I, Lord, I can take a little hit of that, that marijuana. I, 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 no, they are not under grace. They are being very religious. Huh? Somebody shout, the places, I used to go, the places I used to go, I really don't go anymore. I really don't go anymore. Things, I used to do, Things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Do them anymore. Come on now, I don't have a desire, have a desire. to do them at all. Oh, come on, y'all saying it, but I'm, I'm wondering, y'all really, y'all, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I believe that when you have been there, glory to God, and you, I'm talking about you really been there, and you know how God brought you out, glory to God, you have to go, you have to, oh, glory to God, Woo, glory to God. Thank you that I am on my way to heaven. Glory to God. Thank you that I'm no longer a, you know, carnal Christian. You know, I got one foot in here and I got one foot in over there. No, 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 no. I'm all the way in. I said, you got to be all the way in. And the problem today is folk are not teaching this word enough to help people to understand. You must come out from that world and you got to come into Christ. You got to want to be like him. If your attitude stays, come on, you got to deal with that too. God can change your attitude. Ah, oh, somebody said hallelujah. When grace is operating in your life, it doesn't mean it's permission to do more and more sin and you're covered. It means that the grace of God is pulling you further away from that whole worldly lifestyle and making you more like Jesus. It's making you more like Jesus. It's making you more like Jesus. That means you want to walk like him. You want to talk like him. You want all of your personality to be just like him. You want to look, come on y'all, you, you, you want to mimic the word of God. And even when you don't get it down packed the way you want to, you're going to be quick to repent and say, God, I'm going to keep on doing this until I get to the place where I'm supposed to be. I will not remain in the same place. I shall be changed, glory to God. And because I shall be changed, I will no longer be like I used to be in the world, glory to God. I'm all for you right now. How many are all for the Lord right now? So not only is there saving grace, justifying grace, and a teaching grace, but there is what we call the enabling grace. Yeah. Woo-wee! 
peace. Hallelujah. You don't have to lose your mind, glory to God. You don't have to lose your joy, glory to God, because you have the enabling grace of God on your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Y'all getting anything this morning? 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, starting with verse number 8. This is Apostle Paul, glory to God. Everybody remember his story? He sought the Lord three times because that thing kept, well, just in his flesh, in his thorn, in his flesh. There was a thorn in his flesh. And I'm saying to you right now this morning, there are a lot of you that are sitting in this, in, in this auditorium. You got some things going on in your life. And I'm going to say just because they're going on in your life, you ask God to take it away from you and take it away from you. But God is going to do just like he did with Paul. So while you're telling him to take it away, you got responsibility this morning. Come on, come on. I said, while you're telling him to remove it, you got responsibility this morning. Huh? When you get to 2 Corinthians, shout, I am there. I am. Let's look at cha- chapter 12 in, the, in verse 8. He says, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, uh-oh, my grace is sufficient for thee. Anybody been struggling with some things that you've been carrying on for quite a minute? You're just going to be open, honest, open. Huh? Go ahead and open your hand. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being honest. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to say it one more time. Is there anybody else that's struggling with some things that you really, you know, that you really want to see gone? <laughs> now that's better. See, when you're honest, that's when, you know, God is really able to really move. Amen. So let's look at what Paul said here. He says, he says, he says, for, for my grace, he told Paul, he says, for my grace is sufficient for thee. He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength is made what? Perfect. perfect in weakness. He says, most gladly, therefore, will I rub the glory in my infirmities. Not the sickness, it's just any issues that he's dealing with. This is not just sickness only. This is any issue that you're dealing with. He said he can therefore glory in his infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ will rest on him. So if the power of Christ will rest on him, the power of Christ will rest on you. So he goes on and says, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities. Oh, come on, lift up your head, oh, ye gates. Ah, oh, come on, and even be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Come on, y'all, come on, come on, come on. So that means that when you're going through something, what should be your mindset? No, you're coming out, but what does the scripture just tell you? Yes, it did tell you that grace is sufficient, but it says, look at, look at verse... It says, it says, most gladly, therefore, I rather glory. I'm going to glory. Wait a minute. We were just talking about the glory this morning in, in the praise and worship. Yeah. So if you got the glory, you got the presence of the Lord on you. Yeah. That means you can go do, withstand any type of issues because you know you're coming out. Yeah. I said, you know you're coming out. Why do you know you're coming out? Because you know the grace of God is on your life. That's why he says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, Paul took his thorn in the flesh to the throne of grace, and God gave him the power enable, and enabled him to deal with the challenges that came into his life. And he gave him a special grace to deal with it. So when you have the enabling grace of God, you can do things and deal with things that will break and crush other people, but it won't break and crush you. The pressure that would wipe other people out, it will not wipe you out. God I will enable you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, y'all didn't hear that one. 
<laughs> Tell your neighbor the pressure, the pressure that wipe other people out, wipe other people. it won't wipe you out because God's enabling grace. Come on, the things that will break and crush other people, it will not break or crush you because his grace is sufficient for you. In your weakness, In your weakness. He, is he is strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Say, I am strong. Therefore, Therefore, you can glory, you can glory. In, your In your infirmities. I say, You can glory, In, glory. In, your In your infirmities. You can shout, can shout. when nobody else can shout nobody else can because shout. of the grace of God. Grace you of God. can dance, glory to God. When there is no music, all because of the glory of God. You can run, glory to God, and not grow weary, all because of the glory of God. You are an overcomer, not an undergoer, all because of the glory of God. You can do all things through Christ that strengthened you, all because of the glory of God. You got the enablement. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, no depression can have you unless you allow it to. You are in control. God has empowered you to win, win, win. To win, win, win. To win, win, win. Win, win, win. We are winners. We're more than conquerors. We are victorious in all things. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's the reason why we should be always able to go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Go there right quickly. The 16th verse. Hallelujah. 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 Nothing can stop you. Hallelujah. He's not giving you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. We walk by faith and not by sight. Glory to God. It's his grace. How you little boy, Shanda? Uh, that we stand in glory to God. But you got to, your faith got to work right for it. Get your faith working right. I said, get your faith working right. Open up your mouth and begin to get your faith to work right. Hebrews 4, chapter 16, verse. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It says, let us, <laughs> therefore, come boldly. Wait a minute. It says, what now? Let us there come? Boldly. Huh? So you got an issue going on. You got to go to the throne of grace boldly. You can't go there with your mouth closed. He already know what you're going through. Yeah. But he's trying to recognize, do you understand the power source, how he's equipped you? Hallelujah. So that means that if you don't go to the throne of grace with boldness, yeah. you can leave with heaviness. Yeah. And that's the problem with so many believers. You say, I've been praying and I've been seeking the Lord. But guess what? You have not gone and done it with boldness. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence taken by force, y'all. I said again, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence taken by force. So when I go to the throne room, glory to God, I'm not going to the throne room like, God, I hope you were turning around. God, could you possibly work this out for me? God, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Listen to this, y'all get religious. It's all in your hand. And God sitting up there saying, and it's in yours too. 
God, I can't hardly see the way I used to see. And God, open down my eyes. God, help me to walk. God, I know you're able. Oh, Lord, you did it for the blind man. Lord, oh, you did it for the woman with the issue of blood. Lord, here I am. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and I believe God be like, get up. Go back out and come in again. I want y'all to say that. Get up. Get up. Go back out. Go back out. And come back in again. You got to develop faith so that guess what? When things are going on, not only in your life, but you can speak to somebody else's life. So I'm telling y'all, I told y'all, I ain't put nothing out for y'all to be, Lord, help him, Jesus. No. The scripture says, let us what? Holy. Holy. Huh? And boldly. I'm coming in confidence. God is on. I'm seeking you for the turnaround. God, I believe you right now. There is nothing too hard for you. God, you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If you did it for Jehoshaphat, you can do it for me. If you did it for Ruth, glory to God, you can do it for me. If you did it for Esther, glory to God, you can do it for me. You said in your words that you are not a respecter of person, Lord God, but you are a respecter of my faith right now. So my faith cries out to you, oh Lord God. Turn this situation around. Somebody shout, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Say it again, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Come on, say, open up the doors. Pour out your blessing. Empower me, oh God, that I might stand and see your salvation. This is the thing with Paul. God told him, he said, I'm going to walk you straight through it. I'm not going to take you around it. I'm going to walk you straight through it. And what God is saying, some of your circumstance and situation, you just need to walk straight through it. Some of your things that you're going through right now, you will think somebody can intervene for you, but he said, no, 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 no. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Huh? For any scenario in your life, my time is up. <sighs> Listen to this. When you get in trouble times, there is an enabling grace. Sometimes God does things instantly because we live in a microwave generation. But you got to understand that we serve a crock pot God. He is a slow cooker. But when it comes out, glory to God. It's tender, glory to God. The blessings of the Lord are tender, glory to God. And the blessing of the Lord, come on, it will overtake us. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's always on time. Shoo. Glory to God. God, grace comes on you and enables you to overcome the obstacles that is in front of you. And this is why Hebrews 4 and 16 says, let us run boldly to the throne of grace that we might find help. Glory to God. See, I, I know. See, I know. My time is up. I promise you, my time is up. And I ain't going to even try to go no further than this because I got a bunch of stuff up here. But I just want you to know something. That with Zerubbabel, he got the word of the Lord. 
and the Lord told him what he was supposed to do. And it's no different than you this morning, getting the word of the Lord and the Lord telling you what you're supposed to do. He told him to shout grace, grace to it. He had all these oppositions. He was trying to restore. He was trying to rebuild, reboot, restart, restart. Some of you need to start over again. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. If you stay in where you are, now start all over again. Just start all over again. Just jump in from square one and just start all over again. But the bottom line is he took the headstone and he began to shout grace, grace to it. And in the beginning, I, I can imagine Zerubbabel was probably just like some of you. You don't want to put your mouth to it because you're afraid that it won't work. But the, the, but the question is, do you trust God? Amen. Grace, grace to this situation. Go ahead. Grace, grace. Grace, grace. grace. You know what, what your situation is? What your situation is? Huh? You got health issues? Grace, grace to the health right now. Huh? You got issues with money? Short? Grace, grace to my finances right now. Open up the doors. Flood, flood gates. Need a new job? Grace, grace to doors opening right now for my new opportunity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grace, grace, but you got, but you know, he didn't say, say it. He said, shout it. And we love the convenience of just, but you know, I, I would be, you know, I'll be honest, but you know, when you sleep at night, you know, you in that third moment, you know, you roll over, you feel like you wake up like, yeah, you can have grace, grace. Wait, did he say, say it? So what do you want to see turn around in your life today? Are y'all getting this message? Yes. This is the year double. 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 of double grace. Double. So that means I'm going to go to the end. Yeah. I'm starting at the beginning, yeah. and I'm going all the way. Yeah. Grace, grace. Yeah. I ain't going to be all cool about it. Grace, grace. Tell your neighbor, where is your shout this morning? Ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, where is your, de your, your declaration this morning? Say, I see you, but I don't hear you. Hey, hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. So, the word of God will not return void nor empty. I said the word of God will not return void or empty. He's going to what? What does the word say? He's going to what now? Say it again. I hear some people. It will prosper concerning what? Oh, y'all need to go open up Isaiah 55. I want y'all to make sure you got it. Glory to God. Get it right quickly. I promise y'all sit down. Amen. Huh? <laughs> but I want to make sure you got it. Because sometimes I don't think you understand what it really says. Huh? Amen. What does it say? Somebody got it? Yes. So shall my word go forth? Out of my mouth. Oh, wait a Give me a good reader. I need one of those, you know, old church readers. Like, come on, read it out loud. Come on. So shall my word, so shall my word be, be that goeth forth, that goeth forth out, of my mouth. out of my mouth. It shall not, it shall not return unto me, return unto me void, void, but it shall, but it shall accomplish, accomplish that which, that which please. I please. It shall prosper in the things where to I said so. Sit to. Sit to. Sit it. I, she got a little accent there. Amen. So what am I saying? If the directive is to shout grace, grace, then you should be shouting. Grace, 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 grace. But what are you shouting grace, grace to? I heard somebody say finances to your house to your business to your healing to your church come on talk to me come talk to me I, some people are shaking their head but I don't hear you saying nothing I don't hear you saying nothing 
Somebody got some children you need to be shouting grace, grace too. Somebody got some uncles you need to be shouting grace too. Somebody got sisters you need to be shouting grace too. Are y'all ready? Let's say this together. I'm looking for a turnaround. No, no, no. I need you to say it with some truth. I'm looking for a turnaround. I'm patiently waiting. But I will do what I have been instructed to do. I will shout. Grace. Grace. To it. To it. Stand on your feet. Not by might, nor by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord. Not by might, nor by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Say the Lord. 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 This is my year year. of the double grace of God. The The unmerited favor of God. The The supernatural favor of God. 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 On my body body. to receive receive. double. Double. But try it one more time because see, I can still scan the room and I can see people just looking like. Don't allow these moments to pass you by without connecting corporately in faith. You don't know what's down the road that God is trying to get you into right now. But you got to make up in your mind that, you know, I'm going to tell your neighbor, just turn to your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, I want you to get this. Don't you recognize recognize. when you open up your mouth and shout? shout. That's when he's going to sit down because he would have done what the Lord told him to do. The Lord wants that grace, grace on your tongue, lips, and vocal cord. And regardless of what you're going through, he's not giving you the spirit of fear, but but power. power. But power, but power, power. Supernatural, power. supernatural power, Holy Ghost power. So somebody shout, Grace, Grace, do it! Grace, Grace to the finances! Grace, Grace, do it! Grace to my body. Grace, grace to it. That's a 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 grace, grace to it. Grace to it. Grace, grace to it. Lift up those hands. We believe you right now, God, that you're turning things around right now. Not by power, might, nor by power, but by thy spirit. By thy spirit, saith the Lord, I'm shouting grace, grace to it, grace, grace to it, grace, grace to it, grace, grace to it, I'm shouting grace, grace. Grace, 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 grace,
I'm shouting grace, grace to it. Grace, grace to it. Oh my God. Grace, grace to it. Look those hands, everybody. Come on. I just want you to get just a leap in your spirit right now. Just leap in your spirit right now. I want you to get activated in him. I have the power of God will get on you. I said the power of God will get on you. Glory to God. The power of God will get on you. Just begin to leap for joy this morning. Leap for joy this morning. Shouting grace.
enabling grace of God that just came on you. Huh? Do you see a difference? Listen, say, I feel better. I feel better. So much better. So much better. Because of the grace. Because of the grace. I feel better. If you really feel better, go ahead and lift up those hands. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah! One more time. Grace! circle and begin to lay hands on folk right now. Command the grace of God to come up on the people. Don't go quickly. Keep it. Keep moving. Move it. Lay hands on folk this morning. Come on. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shout it. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth. 
Open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Do you feel better now? <laughs> Somebody should be able to better move now because you were speaking to your bodies. Somebody should be able to see better, glory to God, because you were speaking to your bodies. And you ought to shout because you don't know where the money is coming from, but it's coming some kind of way. Somebody's being healed. Now walk it out. Walk it out. Just walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Just walk it out. Just walk it out. You got joint issues right now? Lift those hands. Do what you got to do. Get your victory right now. Get your victory right now. I said get your victory right now. We're not leaving this place. So you opportunity to be born again and God is still healing people right now even while we're in the service of the Lord amen if you're here this morning glory to God and you've been born again but you fell by the wayside remember we talked about justifying grace you know we want to make sure that we know we, we, we're we know that God has healed us and set us free and delivered us but we got to begin to respect the word amen we said thoroughly about you know just the teaching grace just because we know grace is available doesn't mean that we just go and sin and do whatever we want to do. If you're here this morning and you just fall in that category, let us pray with you. First John 1 John 1.9 says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't let nobody put you in heaven or hell. You got to do what you got to do this morning. Amen. Glory to God. So that's you. Let us pray with you. Thirdly, if you're here this morning and have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, wonderful opportunity to receive the baptism this morning. Amen. You need the power. Last but not least, if you're here this morning and you need a church home and you've been here more than one, two or three times and you know this is a good place for you, come on, come on down. We'll be glad to have you here at this church because we do believe right now in Jesus' name that uh, if you're not a member and you know you're supposed to be here, come on, come on. Come on. There's somebody I'm waiting on. Come on. God's been tugging on somebody's heart about being a member of this church. Come on. Amen. Members, I want you to turn to these people and say, if you got a church home, fine. Tell them, if you got a, let, let's body minister. If you got a church home, say, you got a church home? Find somebody that you don't, you see here all the time. Say, you need a church home. You need to be with somebody that's going to teach you the word of God, grow you up in the things of God. Why wait? When you can take the step today. Is there anybody? Come on, come on, quickly, come on. Hallelujah. Is there anybody? I'm giving y'all a chance. I'm sick of the body on y'all now. This is body ministry. Is there anybody coming? Is there anybody walking? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is there anybody coming? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Salvation, rekindle relationship, baptism of Holy Spirit, church membership. Let's shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Let's shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, so you know, we're going into 25 years, so we're going to shout grace, grace to our membership. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Can we shout grace, grace to our membership? Yeah. Come on, shout grace, 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 grace. to the members yeah. of Agape International Ministry. Yeah. They're coming from the north, yeah. the south, the, south. The, east, the east, and the west. And the west. Grace, 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 grace. Mountains move out of their way. Come now. Come now. Huh? Can we shout grace, grace to the consistency of our members? Huh? Grace, grace to the consistency of every member of Agape International Ministries. We call you here. Not just in the seats only, but serving in the capacities that God has called you to. Grace, grace. Come, come. Now, now. Shout the victory. Woo! Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Amen. Don't forget, forget. Sunday morning, morning. we expected this house to be filled to every seat. So those people that you know that need a church home, go by and pick them up if they don't have a ride. Give them the invitation to come. Did you experience something good today? Would you want somebody to experience the same thing? Come Sunday morning. Whatever you decide to wear, just come on in. And don't forget about Saturday. It's going to be our first picnic in a long time. The food is going to be good. The fellowship is going to be fantastic. And we need you to be here. Amen. If you're not signed up for the picnic, please sign up at the information booth today. Amen. That will be a short meeting immediately after the morning service with the men's ministry. They are hosting this picnic. It's going to be so awesome, and we're so excited. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout amen. You talking about some good old barbecue? It's going to be prepared right here on this campus. Amen. Some good old fun games and all that fellowship right here. This is your opportunity to come and hang out with the members. You know, I know that uh, we didn't say about the uh, par agape paraphernalia, but I'm going to challenge you. If you got some serious agape paraphernalia, we would like to see who can really bring it out from the old to the brand new. So that might be a prize for the one that's dressed best in agape. I know you say I, I, you can create something. <laughs> Get you some noodles or something. Just take a, and spell agape. Staple it together. Creativity is a big piece. Amen. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor. In Jesus' name. Make sure you sign up. Neighbor. In Jesus' name. Don't let guests come to your house. And you're not at home. Commit to being here on Sunday morning. And definitely on Saturday. Know that God loves you. Pastor Lucius, love you. Pastor Donna, love you. I love you also. Grace to you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.